Are you running with a heart filled with thanksgiving? I think it's the best way to start off a day. This is the coldest, wettest May I remember ever in the years I've lived in Riverside. And I'm trying my very best to, even as I have to bundle up and wear a jacket and get rained on in May, when I should be hot, I'm wearing a hat, um, to be thankful. Today I was giving thanks for all the different runners I've run with across the years who have made a pivotal impact on my running. My brother-in-law Dan was probably the first guy to actually encourage and invite me to come out and race with him in races. I started doing that in the 70s and the 80s, very rarely, very sparingly, and just for the kicks of it. I ran on my own just to keep myself in shape for surf in between then and had been since I was in my 20s, probably, maybe a little bit earlier. And then I came to Riverside and surfing was a long ways away. And so I started cycling and then went from cycling to running and decided to train for Los Angeles, run Los Angeles Marathon in 91, 28 years ago now. And a guy named Dave Lopez ran with me. Dave wasn't a runner. Dave didn't know anything about running. <clears throat> but Dave got out there and ran with me and it was awesome. The next year I think he ran the whole LA Marathon, did a phenomenal job himself. He was a great running partner during that time. Went through the 90s, Mark Leonard started running with me. Mark wasn't a runner, he came up. He gave up smoking, gave up a lot of bad habits, started running with me. He became just a faithful running partner and he pushed me through so many marathons. Marathons he didn't run, he came out and he trained with me all the way through the long runs and everything. Then I met George Ricks. Now I had always been kind of a solo runner. Was never really big into running with lots of people. George, his strength was networking. George loved to run with lots of other people and so he introduced me to his running group. He introduced me to the running groups that ran races together and during the 90s I started running lots of races together. And George would always say to me, why are you just running for the fun of it? You're fast, you should be out there running to win. Isn't that what it says in the New Testament? The Apostle Paul said if you're gonna run your race, run to win. And that's when I started running out there and winning my divisions and placing and doing those kinds of times and pushing really hard. And that was an exciting time in my running career. During that time through George, I met a woman named Peggy. Peggy was a good friend. Her husband, Aurelio, and I were really good friends already. And Aurelio used to always tell me when Peggy and I would run together, he said, if you and Peggy get it up your sleeves to climb Mount Everest or something, I'm going to kill you. You two are always out there talking about the next big thing you're going to do. And Peggy was good at pushing hard, at pushing forward, and keep on going. But probably the guy I was thankful for the most this morning was a guy named David Smith. David Smith was, I don't know, 12, 13 years younger than me, built like a Greek god. Debbie and Julie used to love it when he would come over to the house in the mornings to start our runs. And on Sunday mornings, that was our morning to run together. He was pretty much the only guy who would run with me on Sunday mornings. Preachers aren't always the most fun to be with on Sunday mornings. And we would get together and we would do nine miles together on Sunday mornings. He helped me train for Sacramento Marathon. He helped me train for other things. But David helped me set a PR at San Pedro Half Marathon, which is hard, uphill, half marathon. He um, pushed me hard because David didn't win his age bracket at races. David won races. I mean, like, as in took first place at races. David was insane and David trained at about a six minute mile and so his push constantly was for me to train at less than a seven minute mile. Now let's give that some perspective. Today I doubt if I ran a single mile under 11 minutes. To train at under a seven minute mile it's work the whole way. There's nothing about it that's easy. There's nothing about it that's pleasant. It's work the whole way. And what David would do when we'd get to hills is David would run out to the top of the hill at about, I don't know, five and a half minute pace. He'd go out to the top of the hill when it was just the two of us, and then he'd wait for me, and he'd yell encouragement down to me. He'd say, come on, you can do it. Don't back off. Don't back off. Pull that hill. Don't stop now. You've got to push all the way to the top. I haven't talked with David for probably 10 years, 12 years. I have no idea what's going on in his life today. Today I was missing him. Today I was thanking God for him. Thank God for Peggy. Thank God for George. Thank God for Mark. Thank God for David. Thank God for all the people who've made it so that 
in my 65th year I can go out on a Sunday morning when it's cold and rainy and I can enjoy a run. You didn't get where you're at today by yourself. Hopefully you have some Davids, some Georges, some Marks, some Peggy, some other people in your life who pushed you forward. If you're as old as me, you definitely do. And hopefully you're ready to thank God for them. Give them the credit that they're due. You wouldn't be where you're at today without them, both for the good and for the bad. God blesses us with groups of people that he surrounds us with. And maybe you're like me. I'm, I'm one of those solo runners who's always enjoyed just being out there by myself. But God gifted me with people who saw through my insecurity or whatever it was that made me want to be out there by myself and forced their way into my life. And they became part of my life for training, for running, to show up in my house in the mornings and just to push me to be better than who I really am. There's someone in your life that's pushing you to be better than who you really are today. Maybe a great thing to do is to thank God for them this morning. A better thing to do, even still, is to send them a note and let them know just how much it's meant to you. God bless you. The rain is coming down. Can you hear it on the houses and the rooftops and on the cars? That's not wind, that's rain. Here comes the rain again. Well, I guess if I'm going to sing, it's time for me to turn this off. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoy it in every single way. Come on out to Central Community. Come to church. Let's be part of the team together. Let's make each other run faster. God bless. Hey, and you know what? Be the miracle.